It's a very Merry Christmas. What a joyous day it is to be together. We're all family in God today, and it's so good to be able to celebrate with you guys today. There's more chatting that can happen after the service, so feel free to find your seat. Uh, This morning, we're going to continue to explore why Christmas. Why Christmas? Why do we even celebrate Christmas? Why do we believe in this story of Christmas? Why do we find our hope in Christmas? Why is this good news of great joy for all people? Why did you come this morning? Why did you come here to join us as we celebrate today? These are all very important questions, often questions that I think our world and the people around us don't ask, and sometimes even ourselves, if we have to be honest. We don't ask these questions enough. Yes, Christmas, as most Australians today, we're going to eat a Christmas feast We are going to probably swim, play some cricket in the backyard on Boxing Day. We're going to share some Christmas gifts with one another. We're going to go potentially drive around, look at the Christmas lights. And it's going to be great to be with family together, either in person or online. All these things are great about Christmas. But Christmas is about more than that, isn't it? It's something way more significant. The true meaning of Christmas is that it gives us hope, amazing hope, hope for our present and hope for our future. The story of a baby boy born in a manger over 2,000 years ago has radically changed the world and changed my life and has changed our lives. I'm not that great at imagination, but if you will, let's dive in 2,000 years ago Let's immerse ourselves in the moment. It was indeed a holy night. You are a shepherd out in the field. It's a quiet, open night sky, and you alert to any dangers for the sheep. Suddenly, an angel appears. You haven't seen one before. Looks pretty scary. Looks glorious. The angel says to you, don't be afraid. Good news of great joy for all people has come. Today in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. To you, to me. A Savior has been born to me, to you today. Wow. Who is he? He is Christ, the Messiah, the Lord, God himself. Wow. Wow. And as a sign, you should go, you will find a baby wrapped in a manger, wrapped in cloths in a manger. Then a great company of heavenly hosts appeared singing, glory to God in the highest, on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Wow. What just happened? You look to your fellow shepherd and you say, what just happened? And then you decide, let's go. Let's go find this baby. You don't just walk to find him, you run. You run to where they said he was going to be, and then you find him. You find Jesus lying there with Mary and Joseph, as it was told. And you tell them everything that you have seen and heard about this baby boy. And everyone inside the manger, the stable, sorry, inside the stable, and everyone around are amazed by what you're telling them about this baby boy, Jesus. And the shepherds, you, leave singing and praising God. Wow, what a holy night it was indeed. I'm not sure where you are at today. What's been happening in your life and what are your current circumstances? See, we live in a world full of uncertainty, trouble, brokenness, pain, sickness, evil, in a world filled with sin. And often things can seem hopeless. Things can seem very hopeless. The reality is there's many people living in our community today that are truly feeling hopeless, that are feeling lonely, that are feeling almost helpless in a certain way. 
The Christmas season isn't great joy for everyone. But today, we ask the question, where can we look? In Psalm 121, it says, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So maybe today you're like the shepherds. You're alone in the fields. You're feeling helpless and lonely. Where do we look? We look up to heaven, to the maker of heaven and earth. See, these shepherds in the fields, like other Jewish people, have been waiting for 400 years. 400 years. That's an extremely long period of time, not hearing from their God. So Jewish people believed in God, and they lived with God and in God's temple. They worshiped Him through the temple. But for 400 years, there's been silence. They've been waiting to hear about this Messiah. They knew all the promises. They knew everything was going to happen, but they were waiting anticipation, awaiting with hope for the Messiah to come. So these shepherds knew all these promises, and all of a sudden, that night, the angel came. See, this prophecy in Isaiah 9 foretold that Jesus was coming. In Isaiah 9 verse 2, it says, The people were walking in darkness. They have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. The light of the world, Jesus has come into the world. It goes on to say in Isaiah 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the Jesus that we knew was coming, the Messiah. In verse 7, it goes on to say, Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that day on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. See, these shepherds were anticipating, they were waiting with excitement about this news, and it has come. The hope and the light of the world has come. At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. How excited are you about Christmas this year? Does the gift that God has given you still excite you? Maybe you've never opened that gift of salvation that comes through Jesus. Hands up if you've received any weird and wonderful gifts for Christmas. I think we all have received some weird gifts for Christmas. In the, we opened up from the grandparents or from the, uh, the aunts or uncles that you only see once a year, the jocks and socks, that's normally the one. <laughs> weird and wonderful gifts. Well, there was a little boy and he got this gift. Let's have a look. So Matt, if you can turn the volume up there for us, let's have a look at what he got for Christmas. Isn't that great? Seeing the kids' joy. You guys can close that one. What amazing, funny video is that? Seeing this kid just really wrapped up with this amazing gift that he got, a banana. And I think so often we miss the greatest gift that has ever been given. See, the greatest gift that's ever been given is Jesus Christ. And God sent his one and only son into this world. And so today my question to you is, have you missed that gift? See, if a little boy can be this excited about a banana, surely we can be excited about Christ Jesus himself coming into the world. The greatest gift 
ever for us to receive, an eternal gift in Jesus. The reality is we don't deserve that gift, but God gave it to us out of His great love. See, you cannot buy this gift. You cannot work and work and work and work to try and earn this gift. The only thing you need to do is to accept the gift of Jesus. To accept Jesus and put your faith, your hope, and your trust in Him. See, as believers, we don't put our faith and our hope in something temporary, something in this life. No, our hope is found in that God sent His one and only Son. In Matthew 1 verse 23, it says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. A man, fully God, yet fully man. He came into this world. He didn't come to be served, no, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Give his life as a ransom for you and for me. So the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death. Our disobedience towards God and our way of life outside of God is sin. And Jesus, in his life, he took and bore our sin. And he went to the cross and he died on the cross so that we can find life in him. So whoever believes in him and turns to him can find faith in him. It is in that Jesus that we find our hope. Our hope for the present and our hope for the future. For the hope of the world has come. That is why we celebrate Christmas. The truth is no matter your current circumstances, what you're going through in your life, what you are facing, whether you're like a lowly shepherd or a sheep out in the field in the dark, feeling lonely, hopeless or helpless today, God loves and cares for you. If you turn to Him and run to Him like the shepherds did, when they heard about this baby boy that was been born, they ran to him, and you will find him. They did find him in the manger. And for us, we can find Jesus whenever we turn to him. And when you find him, he will place a new song in your hearts. He will transform you. He will transform your life and empower you with the Holy Spirit to live with the Spirit's power every day. And you will live rejoicing and glorifying God, just like the shepherds did. When they heard that story, they left that night celebrating and glorifying God, honoring Him for what He has done. So regardless of your circumstances, God and Jesus Himself will give you peace. A peace that transcends all understanding, doesn't make worldly sense. A never-ending joy something that can't be spoiled or fade away, fade away based on what's happening in this life, a never-ending joy in your heart and an eternal hope, a hope for the future, a hope for eternal life. Yet around us and in our world today, there are many skeptics. There are many people who don't believe in this Jesus. Yet there are so many Christians in the world, 2.38 billion, a third of the world's population are Christians. And their powerful testimonies of the life-transforming work of Jesus, there's still so many skeptics. In the recent church, National Church Life Survey, they did a survey upon the Australian community. And they found that only 49% out of a group of Australians said that Jesus actually was a real person that lived. 29% said they didn't know. And 22% on the other end said that Jesus was merely a mythical figure. However, if we look at all the historical accounts, that's not accurate at all. There is so much historical evidence. And according to John Dixon, who is a well-known Christian author and historian, there's overwhelming consensus amongst historians, those that are atheists and those that are believers, that say that, that with their specialities on Roman and Jewish worlds, say that Jesus actually was a true person that really lived, known for living in the first century Palestine, known for his healing and miracle work, 
known that Jesus died on a Roman cross. It's known that his tomb was, in fact, empty and no body found to discredit any of his vocal followers. With many of the earliest eyewitnesses, including the disciples, going to their death, claiming that they'd actually seen the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. This Jesus that transformed their lives and has turned the ancient world and our world today upside down. These were the humble beginnings of the Christian faith. It started in a lonely manger in a stable in Bethlehem. Emmanuel, God with us. This week, our church family had the honor of celebrating a life of a man. His name was Tony Grice. My thoughts and my prayers go out to the family today, wherever you are, here with us or not with us today. We celebrated the life that he lived and the people he cared for and the impact he had on so many. But the one thing that struck me about Tony, and I know this to be true about him, is that he had a hope, a hope of eternal life with Jesus. And even in the last three weeks in palliative care, his hope grew stronger. It was amazing to see his hope that he had, even knowing that this life for him might end, but he has an eternal life that is to come, a joyous time with the King of Kings and the hope that he had in Jesus. See, that hope also for us today, it means he, Jesus, offers us peace eternally. See, for all those that believe, there is a future promise. A promise that when Jesus Christ returns, he will set all things right. He will wipe every tear from your eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. The old order of things will fade away. How we long for that day. We see so much brokenness and pain and people desperate of healing in our world today. See, Jesus knew that we would live in the world that we do when he said these words. He said in John 16, verse 33, he says, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. What a promise we have in Jesus. So why today do we celebrate Christmas? Firstly, because it's the greatest gift that has ever been given. God sending His Son to restore humanity onto a relationship with Him. The hope of the world has come. That is why we celebrate this Christmas. And the truth is that Jesus is who He says He is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And whoever turns to Him can find life and hope and healing in Him. I'm going to invite the music team up as we're going to sing our last song. We're going to sing, O Holy Night. What a holy night it was. And today, I want to encourage you to stand with me and sing, declaring those words. Let us actually come falling on our knees, surrendering to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, remembering the day that it is that we're celebrating, this beautiful Christmas, that our Savior has been born. Jesus has come. Let me pray for us as the team gets ready. Thank you, Father, for your amazing grace. Lord Jesus, for the gift that you've given us in Jesus. Lord, regardless of who we are and how sinful and how broken we are, we know we can always turn to you. You're like a father with open arms waiting for us to return. And Father, I just really pray, Lord, that today you remind us of this great gift you've given us. Lord, we wouldn't leave that gift unwrapped under the Christmas tree. We would open it up and receive it for ourselves. Receive the gift of salvation that transforms lives, that transforms communities, that can transform our world today. Lord God, but we do live in a broken world. And Lord, sometimes we also feel hopeless. So Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would give us hope. Remind us of the hope that is to come when you come back, Lord, when you restore all things. Lord God, you are an amazing God. And today we celebrate you 
and your great love you have shown on us through Jesus. Let's stand and sing and worship through the holy night it was.